what up guys over here at DNA Slithers and Critters today we're gonna talk to you about chewers I know you're running your minds trying to stay calm I'm here to guide you through this very stressful process come on let's go ah, this just makes me so angry I know what you're going through guys having to deal with this little hole right here from chewers it's a pain in the ass unfortunately it does happen and we're here to help you today with future operations so what you want to do is grab that tub at that point turn it into a nice little fancy snake hide or you if it's not that bad you can use it for a big water dish if it's on a, the top I kill the rats the rats are gonna die at that point there's no point of trying to save them um, you can save them however if you put them in a different tub the only way I've ever had it to where I can put them into a different tub and it actually survives is when I did them put them into like a reptile basic style tub at that point you're gonna have them in there they won't actually chew through it at that point you're gonna you know just watch them and make sure that they don't actually mess with the tub um, I would honestly kill them though and that's what we do um, but if you really want to save them and you're attached you're going to want to look at doing a tub without ridges and stuff like that or edges. I just get rid of them though because it's a pain in the butt and unfortunately it does keep happening. Um, it's a learned behavior so once they do that they're going to keep doing that to your tubs over and over. And why not just gas them and sell them for the size that they are and recoup some of the loss. At least they'll pay for the tub that they chewed. Um, that's the way I look at it. It's unfortunate this is not a pet view, but you this is the way to handle it if you're running the business. Otherwise, you're going to run into tubs being chewed. I had to the point where there was like sometimes 10 a day, and I just said, you know what, I'm just going to kill them. I started killing them. Now the rats are calmer. They're more behaved. Um, they don't do that. But you got to realize if they're stuck inside of a tiny little um, cage and they're only living their life inside of that enclosure, they're gonna wonder what's outside of it. You know, I mean, if there's some board and there's an edge they can chew, they need to stimulate their teeth and keep them down. Um, otherwise, they'll actually continuously grow throughout their whole life. And you'll actually see it where they curve into their back of their heads or grow out wild. I call it warthog teeth. I'm not exactly sure the real method or te uh, name of it. Um, but a couple techniques you can do is obviously put it inside that reptilebasic.com tub. Um, I'm not sure about if any other tubs will work because this is just through my experience of trial and error that we were able to obtain this knowledge. Um, I tried, you know, just patching these little tiny holes with pieces of metal and stuff, but ultimately it comes off. They're going to be seeing that shininess and be wondering what it is. Um, they'll start chewing on the glue and stuff that's holding it around there. Obviously, if they ingest the glue, it's going to be ingested in your reptile, so you don't want that. Um, one thing that's nice about doing these bases like this, though, because they have these ridges, and if you got ridges, they're probably going to chew on them regardless of how much bedding you put in there. Moms are going to move it as they get ready to lay the babies. Um, so this little metal sheet right here is going to prevent them from chewing the bottom. Uh, shout out to Johnny Wallace over at House of Slytherin for giving us that information. Um, he's got some really cool stuff over there. If you ever get a chance, check him out on Facebook. Um, but this metal sheet right here is going to prevent them from chewing the bottoms. And for us, that's key. We don't really get too many top chewers on the side. It's just those extra little ridges on the bottom. Um, if you're using like Freedom Breeder tubs and stuff like that, obviously they're more designed for rodents in, in mind but this is something to think about some people put wire mesh along the bottom and that kind of keeps them from chewing so far um, in it but this is what again i've done through experience now you don't want to soak these in bleach they come from home depot it's called roll flashing um, comes in a 20 inch by 25 foot 25 foot roll sorry can you read upside down guys just flip your phone or tv upside down um, but that run's gonna run you about 30 35 dollars a roll you get about 24 sheets of these um these are i believe like a i think a, it was about a foot i would say to 24 inches or something 
or sorry, 18 inches because that's a 20 foot inch roll. Um, just to show you how we do it though, I kind of have it all set up here. Um, how are, we cut out these, it's really simple. I obviously have one that I work on and do as a template and then I just trace around it and what's you're gonna wanna guys use guys is not these. This is gonna kill your arm if you're cutting stuff. What you're gonna wanna get is, as Tim the Toolman Taylor, for those who are the age, get some power. Yes, this thing cuts like a thousand feet per battery. I've never actually had it die on me while I'm cutting it. Of course, I got the big old battery. Um, this is gonna set you back a little bit, obviously, but if you're running a business and this is something that you're gonna want in the t long term, time is money, guys, and you can get money back, but you can't get your time back. Once that clock's gone, it's gone. That pocketbook can get filled back up, though. So, just to kind of give you guys a better idea of how to do this, I got the little station set up for us right here. Um, this stuff, when you open it, guys, be very careful because it is tightly wound and it's going to expand and loose. So I recommend cutting it, and as soon as you cut it, have your hand on it, let it go because it's just going to unwind and go crazy. Um, and I, this stuff's sharp, so you don't want to cut yourself. I recommend wearing gloves. I've dealt with this enough, but these edges got some razor sharp edges so you're going to want to be careful when you do it so you don't actually um, get any of those metal slivers in your hands and stuff because it can be really bad also recommend wearing gloves just because there is kind of like a, a silverish tint that starts to build up on your hands i don't know if it's safe or not um, but you know you just don't expose yourself to chemicals guys personal protective gear is always a priority um, obviously as I'm saying that I realize I don't have safety goggles um, anytime you're using power tools you're gonna want to use safety goggles but let's get to it oh, just to show you this is what happens after you soak them in chemicals kind of just ruins really dulls it down so don't soak them in chemicals you're gonna want to get a marker obviously to do it i just use a permanent marker um H home depot's got these little fancy red ones uh they last forever you can literally leave the cap off i've left it off came back eight hours later and they're still good they work great so i won't cut a bunch but i'll just show you quickly how i do it just kind of just hold my hand down here make sure i got a good view for you guys i just hold my hand down here the edges i'm not too worried about doing the circles the edges because you'll get good at it of course i grabbed the terrible marker on camera after i'm just talking them up this is an old bad one <laughs> so you'll cut this Let me adjust this real quick. Doesn't have to be perfect, guys. I haven't really seen it where it does. It's kind of bend it out a little bit. At that point, the best way to do it is just kind of rest this saw blade here. I got it to where I just turn it sideways a little bit and then And I'm sure you could go on and do as far as lining the sides, guys, but then that's gonna kind of trap the metal unless you're willing to go in and take the metal out, put it back in every single time. It's gonna be a pain. So again, euthanize, don't deal with chewers. It's a learned behavior. This is a really simple obstacle to overcome. See how sharp it is? I didn't even realize it cut me, or not cut me, but tore the gloves, so. I hope this video helped guys, um, just, you know, get rid of them.
I'm sorry if it's a pet and your this video was hoping to help you. Um, I don't really have any recommendations for that. Um, this is a business at the end of the day. We worry about the animal's health and welfare at the end of the day, but if they're costing us money and this is an animal that's supposed to make us money, it's not going to make you money. doesn't make sense if it don't make dollars. So I hope you like this video, guys. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Join the notification squad. We're going to be doing another video later this week. Just because we didn't get one out for you last week, we owe you two. So peace and love, guys. Uh, the next video, if you want, ever have any like ideas on videos you want us to cover, topics, questions, we're here for you. Have a good one.